Question number 17 is from thermodynamics where this is the initial point, this is the final point. And to reach from initial to final, we have two different paths, either via the upper path or via the lower path. Work done in process AF has been given as 200 joule, in process IB 50 and in process BF 100. QIAF has also been given as 500 joule and we have to find the ratio of heat in process BF to IB. Let's see. First, considering from IAF, of course, internal energy at I and B is given, I can write Q is delta U plus W. And in IAF, the heat supplied has been given as 500. Change in internal energy is U final minus U initial. And work done. In the process IAF, the work done in IA is 0. It's isochoric. So the whole work done would be AF and that's been given as 200. And from this, you find that UF is 400 joule. And you know that the internal energy is independent of the process. It depends on the point. Now, considering IB, QIB is change in internal energy, that's 100, plus work done in IB has been given as 50, so that's 150. And in BF, the change in internal energy is 200, and work done in BF has been given as 100, and this is 300. So there were lots of things to interlink, otherwise it's quite a simple and the ratio comes as 2 is to 1. So 2 would be the correct integer. Now we'll move to question number 18. Alright, question number 18 is from magnetism. These are two long current carrying wires and they carry same current I but the direction has not been given. There, they are separated by distance x0 and at distance x1, a charge q moves with a certain velocity in the same plane. And the question says, when the currents are in same direction, radius of curvature is r1. Means, in the field of this, this will move. And when the currents are in opposite direction, radius of curvature is r2. And if x0 by x1 is given, we need to find r1 by r2. Clearly, the radius of a charge is mv by bq. So you could see that mass same, v same, q same, the radius of curvature is inversely proportional to b. And when the current are in the same direction, the magnetic field, let's say B1, so B1 would be mu naught I by 2 pi X1 minus mu naught I by 2 pi X naught minus X1. Because when the currents are in the same direction, the field would be subtracted. And likewise, B2 is when the current are in same direction. When the current are in opposite direction, so the field would be added. Now, plugging this value and putting in the ratio, you would get the ratio is 3 is to 1. And R1 by R2 would again be 3. Now, let's move to question number 19. Question number 19 is from kinematics. These are two aeroplanes moving with a constant velocity in vertical plane. Velocity of A is given in terms of magnitude and direction and velocity of B is given only in terms of direction. And at t equals to 0, an observer at A sees B at 500 meter 
and additionally the observer also sees B moving with a velocity perpendicular to the line of motion of A. That means the whole concept says relative motion of B with respect to A. So it's something like this. Quite obviously, if I resolve the velocity of B along the direction of A, which is 30 degree, then very clearly you could see that velocity of B I am resolving in a direction along this and perpendicular to this. So if I say this is velocity of B, velocity of B cos 30 has to be equals to 100 root 3. Because if the component of velocity along this, along this means along the line of A would be equal, then relative velocity along A would be 0. So, A would entirely see the velocity perpendicular to the line and this gives velocity of B as 200 meter per second. Therefore, the velocity of B perpendicular to that would be 200 sin 30, that's 100. So, 100 meter per second is the velocity of B perpendicular to this line. That's a relative velocity and the distance is 500 meter and it just escapes being hit. That means the time t has to be 5 seconds because that's a distance, that's a relative velocity in this line and the time would be 5 seconds. So now we'll see the final question, question number 20. The final question, question number 20. There is a rocket of length 4 meter moving in a gravity free region and the rocket is moving with an acceleration 2 meter per second square and two balls are thrown one right other left with this much velocity but keep in mind the velocity given are with respect to rocket and we have to find the time in seconds when the balls collide. That would go very easily because if you see with respect to rocket, both the acceleration relative would be zero. So time would be easier if you see in relative frame of the rocket, the relative distance is 4, the relative velocity is 0.5 and the time comes out to be 8 seconds. And obviously, we had to find the time in second, so the integer that comes out to be is 8. So students, these were the solutions for JEE Advanced 2014 Physics Paper 1. I wish you all the best for this paper and we'll see in the solution for Paper 2. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.